Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Denise Robidoux. I'm with Goldman in York. We are economic advisors to the town of Bloomfield, working with this um, COVID-19 task force or team that was um, put together by Mayor Suzette DeBethan Brown and the town council. And um, today we have a discussion on retail, personal services and fitness and shopping local and the importance of it and getting on track and what we're looking at with COVID-19. So um, I'd like to welcome everyone, including our chairs for this program. Um, Vera Smith Winfrey from the Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce and Michelle Bononi, who is the vice chair of the Economic Development Commission in Bloomfield. We also have with us Jose Geiner, who is the town planner and works with the economic development. So welcome on the phone, on, on the phone, yeah, on the video with us too. We have Mike Goman from Goman in New York. He's the principal of Goman New York and Tim Fallon from the Connecticut Retail Merchants Association. Welcome and Tim, thank you for joining us today. Oh, um, thank, you. thank you for having me, it's my pleasure. So what I wanna go over because there's some, a few changes that have come in um, when looking at not only restaurants, but businesses, especially personal services, there are some phase three changes that are coming into effect next week on the 8th, um, just to make everybody aware of those. Um, we go to larger capacities in and out, and all these can be found on the DECD portal. Um, but what concerns us, especially on this call, is that our hair salons, personal services, barber shops can now go to 75% um, capacity and they can also do some additional services they're gonna be allowed. So, um, you know, bars and nightclubs are still gonna remain closed, but for the foreseeable future, I guess it's that way for many parts of the country right now. So looking at that, looking at how we can, um, what we can do for businesses, we are here representing the mayor and the council, like I said, um, to see what the town of Bloomfield can do to help their businesses and specifically in the retail and personal services and fitness sector. So we welcome everybody who also came on and we're gonna welcome comments and everything from people also. Um, so Tim, I'd like to, you to give us a little bit of an overview about the Connecticut Retail Merchants Association, oh, what uh, we do and what you're looking at with COVID-19 right now. Well, sure. Well, again, th thank you, um, Denise and Mike and uh, Jose and, uh, and uh, Madam Mayor for um, inviting me and of course, uh, my colleague at the Bloomfield uh, Chamber of Commerce and um, all of us in the business community through associations or chambers are facing unprecedented unprecedented times trying to represent our members. So um, we do appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit today about retail and how we're trying to hold up through this, um, as I mentioned, unprecedented time. So the retailer, the retail community, as we all know, as consumers, um, it was under the brick traditional brick and mortar retailer was under a bit of a stress and transitional time uh, prior to COVID-19. COVID-19 with the uh, changes that had to be that took place and turn uh, unfortunately in some cases where um, uh, designations had to be made for what was essential versus non-essential really put a lot of stress on uh, retail um, across the board. Uh, those uh, so-called non-essential retailers um, faced that stress um, uh, particularly acutely. They were really challenged to keep their businesses uh, up and running. Um, and, and although um, you know it was a very difficult time, there were some um, good signs in there in the, in the sense that um, the Lamont administration um, did allow for a continuation of business in the sense that um, you couldn't open your store, but you could do a curbside pickup, but um, and so that helped a little bit with certain retailers that were ready and um, could could do that. And when I say ready, they had an online presence, they had staff, they had um, working capital to remain open. Um, but those were seriously challenged uh, many of our uh, independent retailers throughout the state. Um, but gradually, you know, Connecticut got um, through that the worst of the COVID crisis and slowly but surely um, we started to see our numbers go down and as a result the governor 
um, allowed for the reopening of um, traditional brick and mortar retailers um, in phase two. So since that reopening, uh, things like uh, your Main Street store has been allowed to be open under uh, certain conditions, safe store guidelines had to be put into place and the capacity, which you talked about a little bit earlier at 50%, malls were allowed to reopen. And so businesses slowly started to come back. And I, depending on which type of retailer you talk to, they'll tell you that there's somewhere, um, you know, 75, 80% pre-COVID about where they were. They're not back to where they were same time last year, but they're climbing back to where they were before they had to close down in, in early March. So uh, some of the changes that are taking place um, vary um, from national retailer to uh, the main street retailer. The national retailer may not have brought back all the employees that, um, that they had furloughed or laid off. Uh, the main street retailer, small independent retailer, didn't have a lot of employees, probably themselves and maybe um, one or two other people and they probably you know, brought them back. The key to the to uh, to retail um, again, just bringing it back to um, as individuals, really is a consumer um, uh, mindset. What is the consumer confidence? Where does the consumer feel most um, uh, safe and confident to go back out and shop again? So, with the recent announcement that we're going to move into phase three, um, in some ways that's a good signal to consumers because. Um, presumably, uh, we all have trust in the public health officials that, and the governor in making this decision to allow for increased capacity, allow for addition, additional types of retailers to um, open up. And that gives the consumer confidence that it is, you know, a little bit more safer to go out and be engaged um, in their shopping experience. Now, for, for the Retailers Association, um, we are pushing a little bit back on the phase three opening because traditional retailers um, are not included, and we call it traditional retailers, are not included in that phase three opening at this time. So we're, we've been working with, over the last couple of days or since the announcement with the governor's office and the DECD commissioner to you know, get included in that. So that malls will be able to allow, to will have increased capacity and other types of retailers not identified in the phase three reopening will also uh, be allowed to uh, increase their capacity. We're confident we can do that. Uh, we just have to go through a process with them um, to get to make that happen. And so let me end with where I was supposed to begin with, which is who, uh, who is, who, we, who are we and what do we do? I'm the, the Connecticut Retail Merchants Association is really a statewide trade association that represents all types of retailers um, we represent them at the state capitol. We lobby for them full time. We're a full time uh, lobbying advocacy group for the retail industry. We also represent them uh, in the media and in the marketplace. And um, we are all about retail and our members include um, everybody who cares about retail, either directly as a retail store owner or indirectly by working with retailers. Um, that, that, so that includes developers and suppliers and mall operators and, and all that. But our only focus is on the retail uh, industry and that's what we do full time. So. Thank you, Tim. Well, right. you know, you're hearing from a lot of um, your constituents, but what are they looking for from their towns right now? Um, what as far as lines of communication are they, they looking for? Not only with towns, but with local government too. I think um, what's really important for a retailer today is um, given the, the COVID restrictions that they're under the safe store guidelines is the ability to have good communication with local public health officials. So if there is a, you know, um, an in spot inspection um, that that local public health official works with the, either the store manager or the store owner to talk through what's going on in the store and don't make presumptions and don't just come in heavy handed. Um, the, the, the retailers, um, especially the local retailers have made major investments to try to make sure that they're complying with the so-called safe store guidelines. And so the effort on our part, um, and we always like to say we represent the good guys, you know, we represent retailers that are 
playing by the rules and doing things the right way. And therefore, they want to work with their local officials if there's concerns, if they hear that from, um, you know, constituents that X, Y, and Z store didn't have mask requirements or didn't have, you know, uh, six feet distancing, work with us on that. Come in and talk. Don't come in and just make presumptions that we're not complying. And I think if we can keep that good communication, keep it positive. Open, keep it positive. We, our membership and our customer, I mean, our re retailers, it's still the same thing with retail. It's we want customers and we want customers to come into our store and we want them to feel safe so that they're going to come back to our store. Now I've, I've heard anecdotally from stories of people that have gone into stores and people have not worn masks, store employees have not worn masks and they won't go back to that store or they won't, they didn't have the safe guidelines in place. They won't go back. So, um, Again, it's important for consumer confidence uh, that people feel safe walking into the stores. And 99% of the retailers are doing everything they can to make that a good shopping right. experience. Right. We heard the same thing from last week. We had a discussion with restaurants. It's yeah. that 1% out there, you know, that you want to be careful. What's really critical on a local level is that relationship with the local official, the yes. public health And I, I think that's not only for retail, but we've got the other sectors in with us too, especially the hair salons, the barber shops, um, the fitness, yeah. because I know, I mean, I'm going to speak personally here because one of my other roles in life is I own, I've owned a hair salon for 35 years with my husband. And um, I'm also the International Council of Shopping Center state director. So what I'm hearing from people is that they're spending a lot of money to be, to put their customers in a cautious step, spot so that they, they are listening to what their customers want. They're adhering to taking temperatures, things like that. These are all extra things, extra time that these businesses are all having to take, but it's extra money too that's coming off their bottom line. And when you're talking to people that are running, you know, anywhere from 50, percent to 20 percent under numbers from last year yeah you know that they're very very conscious of how they're doing business and how they're talking with their clients yeah i mean i think okay. that anybody that's in a consumer facing business as you mentioned is going to want to make sure that they are um, making that um, experience a positive one so that they get you know re uh, repeat customers that's the name of the game it has been from for retail for since the beginning and it will continue even through this difficult period. It's how do we make sure that we can fulfill our customers' uh, needs when they come in shopping for us? Yeah, I sat in on a um, seminar a couple weeks ago, and they talked about the customer's mindset and how basically there's three types of customers right now. There is your scared, I don't want to go out of the house, don't come near me, don't breathe on me, you know, keep my doors locked and shut. There's the cautious, which I'll come out shopping, I'll go get my hair done, I'll get my hair, you know, go to the barber, go get a massage. But I'm very cautious and I'm very structured as how I'm gonna do that. And then there's the naysayers, the I don't know, you know, I don't believe this whole thing is going on. Um, what they were talking about is forget those two outliers, totally. Just focus you, your, your drive and your business on those cautious customers, because those are the ones that, that are gonna spend money with you whether it be yeah. online pickup or come into your store or come into your business. The personal services businesses, you know, they're strictly show up in, in, in their business. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, well, I think that's true. And I, and I think, um, you know, again, it goes back to the effort that the uh, local retailer is making to make sure that, you know, the store is ready for when a customer comes in and do they have the right, you know, the signs, do they have the distancing? Do they have the, the um, you know, the field, the safe uh, plexiglass? The plexiglass, uh, yeah. You know, do they, do they, are they enforcing um, in a polite way, enforcing um, uh, masks, mask wearing? And I, and I think, well, I think the other thing that Bennett, that's helping, quite honestly, is Connecticut is a, you know, pretty, um, uh, I don't know how to say this politely. Well, yeah. no, I mean, I think we're a pretty yeah. reasonable state. I mean, no, yeah. we're, we're not, you, you're not seeing these um, confrontations that are taking place between customers and, um, and retail stores right. like we've seen in other states. Um, right. And I think generally that speaks well for, for all parts of Connecticut, whether it's, you know, the communication from the governor's office or more importantly, the business communities 
ability to, you know, um, deal with customers and comply with, um, with rules and making sure that we, we get, we're in this together. I think in some cases, we don't get enough credit for the effort that we've done to do our part to make sure that, um, you know, Connecticut remains, um, our numbers are in good place. And, that, and that, it's, a, it's, a, it's a joint effort. It's not just um, leadership. Certainly leadership from state and local officials is important, but, you know, um, any retailer could have objected and could have had a bigger problem with it. Instead, right. we didn't. We said, okay, what do you need us to do? How can we make this work? Because we all want to get back to where pre-COVID, with COVID, we all want to get this behind us. What do we have to do to make this happen? So, yeah. So, and I think that talks to how people are talking and communicating with their customers, how they're marketing to them, how they're marketing their safety um, and letting people know, hey, we're open, it's okay to come out. Right. You know, right. and you know, I know we're talking a lot about, about retail stores, but you know, a fitness, how, and I, I'd love to get into some questions with the people later on, how they're approaching it. I know we have a couple of people that have fitness um, establishments that are in Bloomfield that are on the line today. And I'd like to hear from them, you know, exactly what they have to do. Well, um, can, can I just say, Denise, that, you know, we, in the retail association, we had a lot of conversation about what stores should do, what, what, what's going to be required for stores uh, and, and consumer facing businesses to be open prior to um, phase, whatever the hell phase it was, phase two. Um, and, and, and gyms and fitnesses, fitness centers were part of that discussion and, and malls were, and every other retailer yep. type of retailer was. Because they all blend together. And let me just say that I am so proud of the work that our members did to think through what they had to do to prepare to be ready. So a, a, a fitness owner who became a member of ours talked to me back in March about, I'm ready now to reopen. I know what I have to do. I've thought this through. I'm not yeah. just going to willy nilly open up the store and get other people infected because that's going to hurt my retail store. And that's yeah. not what I want. You've so totally they, lost they, your confidence if you yeah, do that. In, in many yeah, ways, re retailers have been, and th in, in, in other businesses, I'm sure, were thinking about <laughs> what they had to do to reopen the minute they were told they had to close. So there's right. a lot of thought behind this. And I know, you know, Mike shared with me some, some really detailed information that some of the mall operators had, had thought through, um, you know, the, the Manchester Mall and the, and, and the Evergreen Walk area. I mean, those, those retailers thought, put a great deal of effort into the, you know, how do we make this experience work and how do we balance how we serve our customers versus making sure we're still safe. Yeah. Mike, if you want to chime in here, that's, you there's know. There's a lot of effort that went into there. Into yeah, there. actually, I had a quick question for Tim about uh, your members, Tim, and, and the uh, different programs, uh, PPP and the EIDL. Did you uh, find that a lot of your members took advantage of that, first of all? And second of all, how, how are they feeling about, you know, that those programs, have, the, the money in those programs has sort of come to an end. So yes. how are they feeling about how they're going to get through you know, we're hearing a lot, uh, Denise and I particularly are hearing a lot about, uh, you know, the, what, what's going to happen through the holiday season. You know, many, many retailers, you know, 80% uh, of their profit and 30, 40, 30 or 40% of their sales comes from, uh, you know, October, November, December. Right. So, uh, what are you hearing about the Paycheck Protection EIDL? And then second of all, what are you hearing about the, the coming holiday season? Yeah, well, first on, on the uh, the PP, yeah, many of our members took advantage of that program, and many oh, of them, are, yeah, and many of them are now getting nervous though uh, about some of the changes that are that are being talked about, um, uh, and the inability of Congress to e either either deal with a, either a second one or you know deal with some of the IRS rulings on what could be declared income and how does that impact your tax filing. So there's a, there's some anxiety that's starting to build up, as you mentioned, because we're nearing most of the folks have, you know, for lack of a better phrase, burned through that, that, right. that money. And now they're, they're facing um, some new anxieties. And the second um, point about the holiday season is, is really critical. And that's why we are pushing hard to uh, the ECD commissioner to be included in phase three, because that will encompass 
third, uh, fourth quarter holiday season, and it's critical for them. And, and there is a lot of anxiety and uncertainty building as we get closer to, um, you know, the holiday season. Because to your point, um, in America today, it doesn't matter what kind of retailer you are, fourth quarter still matters. Um, and I, for all the shopping that takes place year round and all the shopping that takes place online, it's still fourth quarter is still critical to, you know, a huge majority of, of retailers. So how, what are the rules going to look like and how are consumers going to react is, is that we're starting to, I'm starting to feel that anxiety now uh, from members as to, you know, what are the rules of the road going to look like? So phase three is the first sort of, um, you know, bell that got rung uh, uh, in that area. You know, how, how come, you know, I'm here, well, how come we weren't included in that? Or how can we get included in that? And so we're going to work to try to make sure that that, that takes place. And then we're watching with, you know, great anticipation, like everybody else in the country is, what are the developments on testing? What are the developments on, on, um, on a vaccine? Because again, it all comes back to, you know, what is the what is the consumer going to going to be looking at in yeah, uh, November? Right. Yeah, how do they feel about shopping? Where how are they going to do it? And you have yeah. to ask yourself that. You're all we're all consumers. I mean, how how confident are we all going to be uh, when Christmas season starts? And just a follow up question on that. You know, for uh, the mayor and and for Vera, you know, are you hearing anything from your members that uh, you know mun municipalities can do or the local chamber of commerce can do? You know, for example, do, do your members, are your members asking that, uh, you know, people contact their legislators and, and push to get retailers open as fast as they can? You know, those are the kinds of things that uh, local chambers of commerce and, and uh, mayors and first electmen and so on, you know, they can be very uh, helpful in reaching out and kind of making the case for local retailers to the uh, legislators, the local legislators, state and Senate, or uh, rep and representatives in Senate, uh, as well as government official. Are you, are you hearing any requests for that kind of thing? I'll take the part of the question. Um, thank you, Mike. My, this response that I've been getting from my chamber members is really more or less about how to market and how to advertise themselves a little bit better. You yeah, know, how to practical. get people to come into right. their, you know, how to get people to come into their businesses and, um, but not so much about what the legislators should be doing or how they could be helping them. I think they're just trying to gain the confidence of their customers. Right. Um, and so we talk about different ways to possibly do that. Um, but at the end of the day, we understand that people have to have a certain level of comfort. Um, and if they see a business demonstrating safety precautions, then they, then there's a certain level of comfort that they will have. No, that's good. Yeah, and Vera, you touched on the marketing and, and communicating with your customers. And I think they, what everybody keeps reiterating is safety is number one with your customers. But yeah. how do you, you know, keep that top of mind for them, but also address what each of these businesses, whether it's retail, whether it's fitness, hair salon, barbershop, um, how, how you're addressing and accommodating your customers and marketing to them and getting your messages out? Are you doing special things for them on why they should come out? You know, what's new, you know, and how you're gonna market and message through the holidays with them? Yeah, I think that that's a real, really good point that we've tried to emphasize with the people that we talk to is that, look, it's a tough time, but you can't just stop doing things. You've gotta to continue to be promoting. You've gotta to continue to be reaching out to people. Of course, emphasize that it's safe to come into your business uh, but still maintain that communication, as Tim referred to earlier, maintain that regular communication through advertising and promotional, you know, you may have to get more promotional in a right. time like this to bring yeah. people in. But, yeah. You know, you need to do what you can, you know. So yeah. I think one of the things um, in this discussion is absolutely wonderful. So thank you very much for it. Um, I think one of the things that I'm hearing is people would do more advertising, but they're trying to save on the little bit of money they're making now, right? right? Because yeah. they were so depressed um, financially for the last few months that some of them are just, I wouldn't even say catching up, but <laughs> yeah. some of them are just barely making it. 
So I don't know what we could do or the Merchants Association or Goldman York or the Chamber, what we could do to help in that um, regard. Uh, I go back to the fact that we do have the messenger here in Bloomfield, but on a wider scale, how it would be great for each town um, that had small businesses to be able to do a commercial, right? And that commercial that we can e-blast it out, we can put it on TV, we can, uh, you know, put it on our local station. It'll be wonderful, but that costs money. It'd be wonderful if everyone could mail something uh, to the residents to say, we're here, we're safe. Um, I know at one point in time, uh, the region had a, um, like a little certificate that each uh, business could put into their window once they watched the video um, on how to recover safely, um, the social distancing, the hand washing, things like that. And the idea was people would feel comfortable coming into your place of business because you were now certified that you knew how to handle um, reopening in, in, in a safe manner. I don't know how far that went. I don't know if people bought into it. I don't know if that would help to give someone confidence to come back into an establishment. But it's those things that I think we're going to have to, once again, be very creative about. And now that the, the colder weather is coming, I think it's going to be even more important mm -hmm. to try to get business running again. Yeah, I think, um, well, we, part of the survey that, that we did, but we, and we didn't have a lot of response to it, but I think the number one type of advertising, if you want to call that, the people who are using now, um, or number, uh, the top two, is they're using social media more. And they are utilizing, you know, with social media, I mean, Facebook, town, things like that. Um, but they're also doing their own customer loyalty advertising. So they're commuting, communicating one-on-one -on -one with their customers. And I think in today's day and age, you have to have that online form of communication because so many people use it now. And it, it's, it, there's not a differentiation, differentiation between young and old, you know? Yeah, one, so, uh, one one thing that I saw that I thought was interesting, a merchant that I go into fairly frequently and have done for years, uh, they had a little wicker basket beside their cash register with small pieces of paper. And the, the little sign said, please give us your email so we can email promotional information to you. And that they've been doing that for years. And I was in there the other day and I was talking to him and I said, gee, I'll bet that has really come in handy. And he said, oh my gosh. He said, we've got literally thousands of emails in our, and, yeah. and we're now emailing them all the time. Yeah. And, and it's, yeah. it's, it's a zero cost kind of thing once you've got right. it set up. And, and he, you know, he, he, did, he set it up, not, not anticipating a COVID kind of uh, situation, but now that he's been collecting all the customers' emails for the last several years, he's got this terrific database that he can email whenever he wants. Yeah, that's just a great system. I think, I think that Mike, that's a great, great example of what I was, I was going to say was that if you're a small uh, merchant in Bloomfield or anywhere in Connecticut, you have you have to use every channel possible to reach your customer. So you have to say your store is open if you want to if you want to come in, you you can you can pick it up, you can order it from us and pick it up or you can order it from us and we'll ship it to you. Mm -hmm. So um, the days in which a, a Main Street retailer could just sit back and say it's Christmas and people are on a Christmas stroll and they're gonna come in the store and they only have one way to reach their customer, that was going away anyways towards, yes. you know, before COVID. Now with COVID, it's gone. I and mean, if you don't have multi-channel ways of reaching customers, you're just not going to, you know, you're not going to make it in today's retail world. Yeah, and gotta so you got to get email addresses and you have to have a website and you have to have the ability to, to say to the customer, this old, you know, I'll meet you where you are. Well, that means if you, you want something, how, how do you want to get it? Cause if you want to come in, uh, you know, we'll give it to you, but if you want me to drop it off your house, you know, we'll get, we'll somehow we'll get it to you. And, and that's going to be really, really important. This, this holiday season. And then the other thing that I don't want to want to raise a negative, but you know, we, the, with the retailers association learned very valuable lesson during this first phase of COVID, which is 
there is, we've we always believed this anyways, but we were, you know, shouting to the, um, nobody would, would listen to us. There is no such thing as an, a, an essential retailer and a non-essential retailer. So every retail is essential. So if God forbid something should happen and the numbers start rising in Connecticut and we start talking, we will net, we will not give in on this idea that a selected type of retailer gets to remain open. That's just not, that's not right. Uh, every retailer, every yeah. business owner, right. as, the, as the mayor said, who, you know, strapped with cash now, st stressed out, cannot afford to be like, said, well, you're not really essential. You're going to close. No, that, that's, that, that, that retail store is essential to Bloomfield. It's essential to some customer in Bloomfield. It's essential to that business owner. So we're not going to go back, you know, and, 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 and allow, and, and hopefully that won't happen. But in, just in case there's any doubt, we will fight, um, you know, as hard as we can not to go back to that designation of, you know, what's essential and what's not essential. Somebody said that to me recently. They said any business that's issuing paychecks is essential. It's essential right. to somebody. You know, yeah. it's right. essential to those employees. And that, that ripple effect from all of those retailers, those jobs, you know, it doesn't make a difference whether it's a large business or a small business. I think the that, other, the other there wouldn't be one without the other. The other impact that, you know, just on a local level that, you know, the mayor and the local chamber planners can realize is that would, I'm sure we'll understand this, is that we need customers. So that means that it's not just our business being open. It's the law firm down the street. It's the accounting firm. It's the manufacturer. It's, you know, I mean, if you want to use a bigger example, like, you know, downtown Hartford, they need they need workers to go back in uh, to work at, at, at Aetna or Travelers or whatever, because we need people shopping. We need people going to the office and then having to go to lunch to grab a, 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 you know, a sandwich and then maybe, you know, stopping by a shop after they grab the sandwich or something or going to the dry cleaners because they have to get dressed again. Those, we're, we are, our, when I say we, I mean, the retail industry is dependent upon other businesses to be thriving in order for us to have a customer base. So yeah, that, that's a good point. And so it's yeah. important. It's important mm -hmm. for us to be ready. And if folks are working from home, okay, we, we want to serve them, but it sure would help if a bunch of people got back in their offices and um, we started seeing, you know, um, economic activity and as it relates to just people walking around yeah. and, and going in and out of stores. That's a very good point. You know, Manhattan is reports of actually most of the MSAs of the metropolitan areas across the country are reporting their central business district office occupancy, physical occupancy. In other words, to your point, Tim, how many people are going back into their offices? Yeah. And I mean, the numbers are terrible. The highest yeah. numbers are around 20 percent. Manhattan yeah. is reporting 10 to 12 percent. Yeah. So all those businesses, all those retailers in downtown Manhattan that count on people coming out at lunch and doing a little shopping. There's nobody there. Right. You know, they're down to 10%. So right. you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. right. So we got to do yeah. everything we can to keep working towards making it the numbers look like and business owners in general will say, okay, let's let's sort of get back to the office and yeah. um, try to get back to a more normal routine. One, one point I'd like to make about uh, what's going on out there, you know, a lot of merchants are modifying some some restaurants and merchants are modifying their their storefronts so that they can have sort of pickup windows or pickup areas. And I know Bloomfield and Jose Geiner have done a great job of making that process simple. If, if anybody needs uh, a permit or an approval, you know, Jose has talked about this repeatedly at different meetings that, you know, they're there to help out and, and make it quick, make it easy and help you get those modifications done properly, but in a way that you can continue to serve your customer if all they want to do is come to a pickup window. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's really important. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thanks for that shout out, about Mike. Uh, one, of, one of the things I wanted to uh, gauge is I, I've seen a lot of towns in, in, in conjunction with their local chambers uh, sponsor, you know, uh, buy local uh, promotions where, where they're, I, I think I just saw one today that they're going to buy TV sets and, uh, and, and give certificates to local businesses uh, for, for uh, you know, if, if you go and shop. You find that those have a, a, a big impact, or, or, or just 
they just feel good of measures. Tim, you want to take that? that? Yeah, no, I think those things are great. I think all those campaigns are great. The shop local campaigns are very important and very helpful. And I think, you know, most constituents, let's call them people that live in the town, you know, they want to do what they can to help, you know, local businesses. I think they, you know, um, I know, again, a lot of this always comes back to your own personal experience, but, you know, you, you have your favorite restaurant that you go to and all of a sudden they're shut down at COVID and you feel like, man, that, that's just not right. I got to try to help them out. So I'm going to, I'm going to take, you know, once a week we'll do takeout. So I do think that there's a, there's an, in, there is a um, sentimentality to people consumers have to shop local. And so those campaigns reinforce that, um, you know, that mindset. I, I don't know if, if Vera has, has, adds more to that, but that's my experience. You're closer to the, you know, to the, you know, local than I am in some ways, Vera. So I would, your thoughts would be probably more close, closely aligned than mine. I mean, we do spend a lot of time at the chamber trying to, um, you know, follow up with businesses, letting them know if they do have a promotion, we're willing to add it to our website, um, publicize it on all of our social media platforms. Um, and then we've also tried to make sure that any of our programming, we open it up, open it up to not just our members, but also to other businesses so that they can feel as if they are part of a community that also cares about them. So they can see that the chamber, you know, we are not just about this a certain population, but that we are concerned about everyone being successful. Um, you know, and if we get chamber members out of it, great. But if the business stays open, that's even better for us, right? Yeah. Right. Um, so I think, you know, it's about b making sure that we remain present. And I think that the town, um, you know, us host hosting these type of conversations is really important so that they know that we are here on their behalf. Um, it would be great to see more people take advantage of it. And so I think that one of the things that we should be doing is perhaps not doing these midday, maybe the next next go around, we can think about doing some in the evenings when businesses, um, you know, when business owners are actually home. They can maybe more people will participate. So that's just some you know, other things that we can think about. I also know that they're definitely looking for opportunities that either that we're sponsoring or that the town may be sponsoring that they can be part of. So for example, I know that we talked about the um, lighting of the tree. So what opportunities are available for them to do that? Are we going to be doing any type of outdoor events that they can, you know, they can take hold of? And then they are, con there are consumers, our community members, our residents can actually see them on site, you know, as opposed to waiting for them to come through their doors. But if this is an opportunity for them to, you know, actually see them up close and personal and that they are handling business well, then, you know, that's another uh, thing that attracts them that will attract them to come into their business. So I know that one of the, one of the had a question. today was um, to talk about some fitness uh, um, <clears throat> businesses as well. Um, and they're a little bit different because you can't pull up to a window <laughs> yeah. to get a fitness class, but we could probably do something online or we could probably, I know it's getting, uh, Chile, we could have probably hosted a um, on the lawn fitness something or other that would bring um, awareness of their businesses. Right, so fitness I, is, they're coming have, outdoors. Right, I think we have someone on the line. I think you had mentioned that yep. before. So I just wanted to make sure that we, that we didn't, that didn't get lost. Jose, if you want to open up to the if sure. there's people still on the, you, you can open it up and we can, we can Trevon, let them. Trevon, he, yeah, if he, if he has a question he can, or, or concern, I just have to unmute yourself. And actually, if he could, you know, if he's there and you want to talk a little bit about how you've had to change your fitness business during all this. I don't know if Leanne's on or if Trevon's on. Well, if you... Okay, I've unmuted them, so there we go. Hey. <laughs> it's the They're Zoom, man. It's the Zoom. Zoom is crazy. Guys, guys, how y'all doing today? Good, how you doing? We're doing awesome. We're doing amazing. 
All right, so uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question again? Can you talk a little bit about how you've had to adapt your business during this and how you're um, communicating with your customers, what you're doing to promote yourselves? All right, so what we do to promote ourselves, we online, we uh, tell everyone that right now we're on Facebook, Instagram, and just showing people that, you know, one, we want you to think positive. We definitely want you to be safe, but we want you to think positive coming into the gym because we want to make sure we want to take all the negative energy that's going on around the world, throw it out the window. We just want to stay positive, stay clean. When they come in, we make sure we tell everybody to wash their hands. And we have a bunch of things on a wall, what to do based off of like putting um, hand sanitizer on. So we make sure that's first. And yes. then two, we make sure that we give each other enough space for the client to work out. So when we first open up, we have boxes all over the gym. So everybody will be able to come in and be in their own box with their own equipment. So they'd be in their own space and they didn't have to worry about being next to anyone else because they were six feet away. And um, ever since then, you know, everybody got comfortable two months past and then we just kept elevating and then people been coming in and we just been growing. So are you seeing most of your, co your customers come back now? Yes. Okay. 80, oh, that's good. 89, 90% of my customers came back. Oh, that's know. excellent. Trey, are you, are you doing uh, businesses by appointment or are you just, are, are they customers walking in off the street? Both. 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 So you, you have members that join your gym? Yes. And, and do they make appointments to come in or they, they come in whenever they want? They, they make appointments and they do drop-ins. And they do drop-ins. Yes. Yeah. Trayvon, would be great. Um, I'm Vera from the chamber, by the way. So nice How to you meet doing? you. <laughs> um, we got to get you to be a member. Um, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. um, Trayvon, I want to make sure that you tell us the name of your business as well as where you're located and your hours. All right. So my name is Trayvon Cheatham. This is Leanne. And uh, the name of the business is Get and Get Fit. Our hours are 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. So we open seven days a week. We have free classes on the weekends. We open up on the weekends from 7 a.m. and we close depending on 5 p.m. Depending, depending on the schedule for that day because we'll still be in the office, but some of our trainers, they'll be able to have one-on-one -on -one clients even on the weekends too. But we have free weekend classes. So I would love for everyone that's here to come visit and you'll be able to see everything that we offer. And By the way, hi, Leanne. <laughs> and where are you located? Are you are in Toby Road. Road. Yes. One more time, I'm sorry. 31 Toby Road in Bloomfield okay. is where we're located. Unit 3. Before, be when we had to close down, we was on Zoom. We was on this, training everybody at home, training all the kids, because I do train kids, training all the babies, and training all the adults at home. That's great. That's nice. wonderful. So I can um, speak to the Saturday classes because I did survive a class. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's very professional. Um, it's very clean. Everyone is very respectful of everyone else's um, space, um, social distancing. One of the things that I, once again, um, now that Trevon's on the phone with all the right people, um, Michelle and Vera and Denise and Mike from Goldman and York is once again trying to help to make sure that our businesses are advertised, that we can provide the support that they need to help them to continue to grow. And also coming up with a plan. And I know that's going to be our next round table as, you know, if, if this happens again, how do we pivot successfully um, to keep our business going? So Trevon, I want you all to stay connected um, because as, uh, saying goes your success is our success as a town so thank you very much yes so we want to definitely keep telling you more based off of what we offer um and what we've been doing ever since all this happened so we have spray bottles here and we tell our clients listen when you go to different stations grab a, a spray bottle on a rag and wipe down everything you touch and then as the trainers we wipe it right behind them so we make sure we cleaning up I have a young man in here every day. He's in there right now cleaning up. We are, we making sure safety is first. We want every client to come in here feeling good and leaving out feeling good and going home to see their family. 
So we wiping down everything, we cleaning up, and we just making sure everybody coming here with a, a good spirit and good energy for them to go home. So I think that that positive energy is what people oh, want to see. They don't yes. want to come into your business and they don't want to see you complain. No, they don't. You know, no, we don't. We don't it's want just that. like they want to. They want an outlet. Whether I'm going to get my hair done or I'm going to work out, I want to be in my happy space. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. And I think and I that's think important. Also, Even when I'm shopping, I want to, you know, show me something that I want to look at. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. So. And for me, I know. Um, I like to see that they're always wiping down counters. Right. That's really yes. important to me. So yes. it's great to hear that you're doing that at the gym. Um, when I went back to my gym, that was really important to me that they, like you, they gave me a spray bottle and my own cleaning cloth so that I can, you know, keep it with me for the entire time. Right. And they limit the number of individuals that are in the gym at the, at, you know, at one time. So that made me feel much more comfortable. Um, and I'd like to add, I will be at your class on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you better make it an early, you better make it an early Friday night. Sounds like yeah. it should be out late yeah. Friday night. <laughs> We I have Advil if anybody needs it. <laughs> Hot we, yeah. So. so thank you, thank you. Is there any know, other questions appreciate. you would like to ask? Is there Say any other again? questions? Is there any other questions? I mean, I have a you know, question. I'm just, I was wondering who else is on the line, Jose, if there's anyone else. Oh, that yeah. we want. Okay. No, I think it's, it's good. You know, you're, you're living the real life experience. I know you know, like I said, I own a salon too with my husband and I, I, I don't think we've ever used as much disinfectant. We used loads before, but now it's even more. Yeah. Um, and, but the customers, they do appreciate it. Yes, they sir. really do. You I know? have a question for uh, Trayvon. Trayvon, Trayvon how, how are you holding up with your supplies as Denise uh, mentioned? Oh, I have a yeah. closet full of cleaner <laughs> supplies. Uh, I was already prepared before this even happened. Wipes, bleach, like we was already three months ahead. Uh -huh. And it's funny because I will always go pick up stuff every time I was in the store, but I wasn't ready for this. I wasn't ready for April. And then while everybody was going crazy, going shopping, I already had a closet full of stuff. And um, it came, it just, yeah. we, was, we was prepared. Okay, we know where to come for Lysol wipes then. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, come. I have a lot of them. <laughs> I was giving them away to some of the clients because they needed it. Um, and just just being a blessing, just being a blessing to everyone that comes in the door, people that just needed help. So, so tell that's what me, we're here for. Do you have a plan in place for, God forbid, they have to do another shutdown? Not that we want them to do oh, that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. So, um, so there's two things I'm thinking about doing, going back to Zoom and splitting up the gym. So if a client, okay, so if they shut down everything, then we're going back to Zoom. Yeah, going right back to Zoom and just doing the same thing we're doing now and training people what we doing, four, four times a day, three times a day. And then um, we're just going to stick with that until everything elevate and get better. But um if slowly get no more than five people at a time or two to three to four or five people at a time like we did when we first started and give everybody their boxes so they will hit me in up and they'll ask me in what equipment that's available for them to use then we make their own box for that equipment and then they'll be in that box for a whole hour working out then for that hour the following hour we was cleaning up everything for the next group of people to come in, come in. Yeah. and um it worked out pretty good until so everybody got comfortable it was like what june july july yeah everybody started getting comfortable coming in they started seeing other people being comfortable coming in and then from then it just kept going, <laughs> just kept going. i'm like yes that's what i want to see let's go that's well so you fun. can you can tell just by talking with you guys that that you have such a positive attitude oh. and that you're port you know you're putting that onto your customers and for yes, them. Yes, yes. And I this think so that much. that is so key, like we yes. said, with just that, how you communicate and everything. Um, now, do you have um, mailing lists that you're um, in touch with your clients through your email, through your website, through loyalty? Everything, um, email, okay. website, uh, text messaging, we do it all. Okay. <laughs> and you have to, you have to now. You know, um, whether you're small or large, that's everything you have to do. Um, so 
okay, I have one other question. Go ahead. Because people have talked about through all this payment options and how some places you've gone into, they won't take cash anymore. Um, they don't want to even take debit cards. They want to go through either Apple Pay Vimeo, or you know, um, Venmo or the others. What are you seeing from people? So for our payment, we use a system called MindBody. Um, it's a payment and scheduling app. So they actually store their card on their MindBody profile and then automatic automatic payments come out on their payment date okay. every month. Um, we do have a few people that don't want to use their card, that want to use cash. We make a few exceptions, but most of our clients are on MindBody automatic payments. That's good. I think that's the way more people are going. And but even Tim will attest to this in retail where 20 years ago, you know, 75% of it was cash that came through your door. Now, if it's 5% of cash, yeah, comes oh, through definitely. Your door, yeah, you know, yeah. When I, when I started with the retailers association 25 years ago, I had a retailer tell me it was 50 50 and now it's probably way less than that. I think you're right. I mean, cash yeah. is, yeah. And since now that they say there's no coins available, I want to tell them they're in jars up in my bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I do, I would just say, Denise, just, just very briefly that um, Trayvon is a perfect example of what we talked about when retailers, when they shut down, they started thinking about reopening right. the minute they shut down. And he's a perfect example of um, the thought that retailers have put into their business because they want to serve their customers. That's the most important thing. They want their customers to come back and say, well, Trayvon's gym is really safe. I'm going back again. Because if they left and said, I didn't feel comfortable there, I didn't feel safe there, they would not come back. They wouldn't come right. back. And they're not going to tell anybody else. And there's right. no, it's and that his, word of mouth. And his business is one example, but there's thousands of them throughout the state. Whether you're buying a, a shirt in a clothing store or whether you're going to a, you know, to a little hardware store to get something, if that customer doesn't feel comfortable, they're not coming back. So right. kudos to you, Tray Trayvon, for all the work you did to get ready to reopen and to remain open. I think that's great. Thank you. Yeah. And Leanne too, because I know you're part of this. <laughs> well, I just I just figured Leanne was with brains behind the operation, but yes, she we, is. Give, she we, we give Tray <laughs> Trayvon's the front man there, so we'll let him. I'm the fire. <laughs> so, Thank you. Um, we're getting through. Um, I know we're coming up on a few minutes left, but um, Michelle, I wanted to know if you have any comments. I did have my hand raised, but I didn't think you saw me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's quite all right. The conversation was very interesting. I enjoyed uh, listening to all of it. Um, I want to comment on uh, two comments. One was from Mike Goman and the other one was from Tim Phelan. Thank you for being with us, Tim. You certainly have uh, a broad um, experience to share with us, and I appreciate it very much. The thing okay. that Mike Goman said was, there are venues that we can approach with regard to um, approaching upper levels of government beyond the municipal status. And I don't believe we do that. I don't know if anybody else does. The only thing that I can say about that, having lived in different states, although I look at Connecticut as being my home, we communicate in different ways here. Our communication style is very different from a community, say in the Midwest, that would come to the council meeting, beat your door down, and stand at council meetings with pitchforks and hose demanding that you do something. The conflicting statement that comes about is that I don't know of any municipality, at least that I have read about, and I'm sure there are some, who are contacting the upper levels of government, either by way of council actions, uh, resolutions to say, look, we're fight fighting the good fight out here. What are you guys doing to help us? We are working through this. We are all working, even us volunteers. Are you? There's so much conflicting and confusing information that's coming out that you read in the paper every day, including from state agencies. Sometimes you don't know what to believe or you have to sift through it to the best you can. It hasn't been an easy lift. The most confusing thing for me working on coordination has been trying to interpret what a reasonable 
message we can get out to people to actually help them other than words. Words are great. We can encourage people. Um, but unfortunately, there's another big wrinkle here with communicating with the hires up. This disease, like other diseases, not too many in our history in the United States, has become a political disease. So broaching certain aspects have become either uncomfortable, greeted in silence, or lots of people think that it's not a comfortable thing to confront with regard to the example you gave, Tim, is that you believe all businesses are essential. I do too. But apparently there are people who don't agree with us. So to me, an essential business, I'm in mostly in agreement with what you're saying. If something prevents a, presents rather a physical hazard, I could see how it would not be allowed to open. But there seems to be such a non- agreement compliance with regard to what all this means and nobody is addressing it and simply claiming executive orders isn't doing anything. Um, most of us don't have regional spokesmen. I wonder why the Connecticut Municipalities Organization is not speaking with a loud voice on behalf of all of the municipalities that it represents and making a big difference with regard to proactive activities. Perhaps they are, and that's something I don't know about. I don't know, but that's an opportunity. Um, the other area of frustration for me is that we have in Bloomfield long talked about having a communications officer. We still don't have one. And Mayor Suzette has jumped into this job with great energy and effect, and I commend her for that. But having somebody in an ongoing basis that could work with our consultants and coordinators would make such a difference and would seek venues that we occasionally, that we don't have here. We just don't. We don't have a regularly circulating newspaper. We don't have cable TV that we can rely on. So our messaging responsibility and, and mission is stymied in a lot of ways. On the positive side of it, I don't know what other communities are doing, what we are doing even. Do you have an idea of that, Jose, Mike? Um, from the standpoint of at least trying to communicate with our businesses, with the um, folks that we have, um, even something as general as Mike said, of every business should have a guest book, every single one. Just like when you go on vacation and you visit historic sites and they say, want to hear from us? And you give them your email address. Because I was thinking today before our meeting that if we're looking at businesses in general, I'm sure Vera knows, uh, many of the mayor probably does and Goman in York does too. But I don't know who all these businesses are. I don't know how you could possibly know how and where and how to communicate with everyone. And if this happens again, which is our biggest fear, then what? So this whole communication thing to me is a great challenge. And I always think that we need as a government to speak in a unified loud voice and speak up. And I mean, literally up. Because if there's to be any action with regard to actions on behalf of all of us, we don't have the resources to serve the state, but the state has the resources to serve the state. Now I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> well, 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 a couple of things I would say that I think Bloomfield's a leader in terms of uh, an active uh, community leader group of leadership. Oh, good. That is, because uh, we, we see a lot of um, uh, municipalities that we're working with that really don't see themselves as being uh, in a position to do anything. So they just, are not doing anything. They're sort of letting their local business community sink or swim. Uh, you know, no, there's no malice in that. It's just, they just don't see themselves as having a role. Uh, I, I would also sort of echo Commissioner Bononi's comments on, you know, communicating up uh, through the state representatives and, and up into the government. They, they need to hear from everybody. They need to hear from Trevon. They need to hear from, you know, Vera at the Chamber of Commerce. 
you know, you don't have to go after them and be mad at them. You just need to get a message through to them and say, hey, look, right. guys, we've got a lot of people out here that are, that are struggling every day to survive. Don't forget about us. You know, we need your help. And whenever you can, do what you can to help. Tim Phelan at the CRMA knows this firsthand. He spends most of his day, if he's not talking to members, he's talking to legislators. Yeah, let me, I can just, just to echo my, Mike's point, it doesn't take much either. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it um, doesn't take um, a thousand uh, businesses in one town to move a legislator. It really doesn't take more than one or two um, members of a uh, you know, business community in a local town to reach out to a legislator to move them, to get them, to yeah. get him or her uh, their attention. They're super sensitive to responding to business. So if you, if you call them and say, I need your help, or two people call and say, I need your help, uh, you're gonna get, you're gonna get some um, response from them. Yeah, and people in leadership positions like the mayor and like Vera, I mean, uh, you're perfectly per, uh, positioned to reach out to your state reps and state senators and you know, just say, look folks, you need to be doing everything you can to get us back open again and uh, help us out wherever you can. Yeah, and I think you need to trust people like Trayvon uh, that know their business, to, you know, to, to sort of make the point that every business is essential. We can't re be relying on, on the governor's executive orders to, to encompass everything because right. there's people like Kremlin who thought it through and can make it work. So I think having these wide, uh, widespread uh, um, orders that, that, that really impact a uh, overly impact businesses, uh, you, need to, you need to take into account the, 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 the local voices also. Yeah, I agree. And I think Trevon, uh, you know, Tim, Tim Phelan and Denise and I, you know, we've all been involved in government relations for years and we talk to these folks all the time, but your voice will be more powerful than ours. They, they hear from us all the time. They sort of tune us out. <laughs> I'm ready. Definitely. I'm ready. Put me in a position right now. Definitely. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I would love to speak. I would definitely tell anybody that wanted that that you put in front of me. I let them know. Listen, one, we have to we have to have the confidence to be able to believe that one, we don't give up. We can't give up. One, we can't give up on ourselves or the people that's counting on us. I can't give up. I love everyone that God put in front of me for me to be able to put a smile on their face every day. So um, again, I can't wait to meet y'all in person. I have some things that I would like to definitely be a part of and uh, let's make some popcorn moves. Uh, I can't wait. Just, just, I, I love talking about my business all the time and just letting people know one, just be confident and comfortable and um, safety is first. And we take care of everyone that come through these doors. So Good. You know, I, I love what I do. So. Well, I think as we, you know, finish up on our hour here, uh, we want to try on, we want to thank you for your insight. It's, it's absolutely wonderful to actually have somebody, you know, working out there and, and realizing it and everything. And, and um, you know, I want to thank everybody that t took their time. Tim, thank you. And yeah. continue to push on for everyone. Vera, Michelle, Jose, uh, the mayor, everything you're doing for the community and stuff is so important, you know. Yeah. Um, right. You know, we've shown through the past that, um, you know, different hardships come up, but we are resilient people. We always are. Um, we come through it. We find new ways to do things. And I think um, especially Bloomfield has a sense of creativity on how they do things and they have a willingness to survive and get through everything. And I think that's what we want to portray to people. Yes. That we're going to work through this. If, if we get hit with another round, we're going to work through it and we're going to come out and be a survivor. So yes, I want to thank you all for your time. We appreciate everything. We appreciate you taking part. And next week's um, is, uh, let's see, next week's is on financial stability and working through it. And we have um, local people that are going to be on it. And Mike, we have somebody, um, Mike is going to be um, moderating it but we have somebody from the small business finance that's going to be on. So please take part in it and listen. And it will be, be on Monday. Thank you all. Monday. Monday, I'm sorry. So I'll see you on Monday. Monday, 3 o'clock. October, it'll be October already. October yeah. 5th. Right, wow. All right, thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks for Thank you, everyone. Right. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you all. Have a great see day. See y'all soon. Get a good fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right.
And stop recording, yes.